time to talk mules and donkeys for the next hour. Uh, Steve, back in 1982, when you started work, 81, 82, when you started working with the mule, uh, you knew we were going to be doing this, didn't you? You knew that <laughs> that almost 40 years later, we'd be doing a, you'd be on TV, we'd be doing a live video on this thing we call the Facebook and uh, YouTubes. You knew that, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Looney Tunes, <laughs> maybe, you know. Uh, I never thought I'd be, I mean, you know, I, I'm usually, I was usually going up the trail, not even knowing what, what's a, a what? A cell phone. What <laughs> right. would a cell phone be, you know? And, you know, and I mean, we, you're going up the trail, you think you're doing really good just to be able to talk to one another, you know? Yeah. Golly, it's amazing. I, I just used to have one of them big bag phones, and I still got it. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember those. And I really thought that was something when I went back in the wilderness with that bag phone. Yeah. I couldn't talk to nobody, but I had <laughs> a bag phone. <laughs> you had it just in case you needed it. Um, yeah, I remember when uh, when the uh, the car phone as well. That was kind of like the status symbol. If you had a, a phone in your car and it had the you know, the cable and everything like that. Of course, if Nat's watching and any of her peers, they might be thinking, I don't even, I don't even know what that was. You know, that we don't have home, <laughs> home lines very often anymore. Oh, goodness gracious. Yes, so that is what we are doing. We're coming to you live with a mule and donkey program here on Facebook, here on YouTube, and we are glad uh, that you're joining us. Like I said, my name's Dave, and uh, this here is Steve Edwards. Steve has been working with mules and donkeys uh, cowboy in all his life working with mules and donkeys nearly 40 years now and uh, we just have a few things that we've learned over this time that Steve's learned that I've picked up from him uh, and that we've all kind of just uh, taken under our wing and started to work it. A few things that we want to share with you. Hopefully it'll make your life easier and uh, help you get a little bit more of enjoyment out of your equine. So uh, the way this works, it's very, very simple. Number one, we like knowing that our friends are watching. So if you are watching today, and we know that you are, uh, we want to make sure that you say hello. So in the comment section on Facebook or YouTube, just put your name, where you're watching from, and uh, what the weather is like. Very nice, very simple, very easy. And if you are one of the lurkers out there, yes, I'm talking to you, who has been watching week in and week out, and we have not heard you yet, we have not met you yet, this is the week we want to hear from you. So if you've never typed in hello, this is the week we want you to do that. We're just we're just really grateful to have you here and we want to acknowledge you uh, and uh, and say thank you for joining us. The second thing after you invite or after you uh, after we invite you to to make yourself known and put where you're watching from, the second thing is that you ask any and every question that you have about your mule or your donkey. Steve, we never get tired of answering questions, do we? Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love. Love yeah, answering great. questions. And a lot of times we'll get the same question uh, week after week. Sometimes we'll even get the same question in the same broadcast. And you know what? Hey, that's okay. Because in this world of equine training, repetition is key. Repetition yes. is key. Several weeks back, uh, Steve had uh, Steve had all of his videos on sale for a great price. And one of the things we wanted to point out is that when you watch video A, video B, video C, video D, you're going to hear a lot of the same things. And that's intentional because it might not ring true in your brain the first time you see it, the second time you see it, but the third time you see it and hear it, that's when it finally starts to make sense. So ask any and every question you have. No question is a dumb question. No question can be asked too many times. And then yep. the third thing is that, and y'all did this actually fantastic last week. I went through uh, all the comments last week and y'all did a great job of this. So keep that up is inviting other equine fans into these broadcasts, especially folks who are interested in the mule or the donkey. Uh, they have one, they're thinking about getting one or they know someone who has one and they just wanna know more invite them because you will be their favorite person in the entire world because they will <laughs> finally feel like they're not alone and they can yeah, yeah. actually get some results. So with that, I'm going to start introducing everyone that we've got joining us this week. Uh, first off, we've got Melissa. Howdy from Oregon. It's mostly sunny. I ordered your ground foundation starting kit and driving uh, part one DVD. I am anxious to get them. Melissa, we're anxious for you. If you need anything at all once you've got those, Send us a message, support at muleranch.com. We want to make sure you get the results that you're looking for as best we can. Yep. Uh, Julie from Kentucky, 
Kentucky, 60 and cloudy. Julie, we are so glad you're here. What part of Kentucky? My family is from Paducah, and a lot of people have driven. Steve, you ever driven through Paducah? I have. Yeah, it's got the interstate going right through there. Everybody drives through Paducah at some point in time. So uh, (laughs) what part of Kentucky? We've got Hondo. Hey, I get to watch live for the first time. Hondo Hunter. Hondo, Hondo, we're glad you're here. Absolutely. Uh, Ross is watching uh, from Idaho, 50 degrees and rainy. We've got Sharon uh, sending love to us, Steve. Julie Jones, hi from Mount Vernon, Washington. Mount Vernon, Washington. Steve, I'll tell you what. If you ever get to Mount Vernon, Washington, they have got the Tulip Festival up there in Mount Vernon, Washington. You ever heard of that? Well, absolutely. That's George Washington's home. That's Mount Vernon, Virginia. There are multiple Mount Vernons. That's right. There's a Mount Vernon, uh, Illinois as well, I think. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Hunt. All that stuff. All uh, over the place. Everybody. Mount Vernon, Virginia, Mount Vernon, Washington. There Washington. is a tulip festival there. Uh, I'll see if I can find a picture um, and share it later on in the broadcast. Gorgeous. So we're glad that you're here, Julie. Rachel's here. OMG, I love you. Uh, she says, Florida, two mules. Awesome. Glad you're here. Sharon's here, says mules are special. We agree. And, and isn't that the thing? We want to respect the special uniqueness about the mule, not just throwing them all and saying all equine or all equine. Yep. Perfect weather. 75 degrees, Kathy says, from Cotati, California. Uh, Jolanda, I am not watching. Uh, I am not watching. Well, you're here, so hopefully you see and hear us. And we suffered through drought. This country never, ever suffered through drought. Uh, She's in the Netherlands. Oh, you know what that means, Steve? That means we have gone international. Ring it, Steve. Let the people hear it. <laughs> That's right. We've gone international. We are so glad all of our international friends are dra- are uh, joining us today. Casey's here. Howdy, Steve. Thanks for the weekly advice. I appreciate it. And I darn sure know Kevin. My mule does too. Thanks a million and keep doing what you're doing, guys. Awesome. Rebecca's here. Great watching from the North Carolina. Great information. Shara says, I can't believe how accessible Steve is by phone. A lot of people say that. They don't believe it, Steve. Yeah. Uh, well, 61 degrees from uh, Connecticut. Cowboykins here. Man, we've got all the gang here. All right, let's get into some of these questions and we'll do some more welcoming. Uh, uh, Julie in Kentucky says, question. I have a two-week-old mule foal out of uh, spotted saddle mare. Is he too young to learn to lead? He resists by pulling backwards. Now, if I'm in the round pin, he sees I have the halter and he just runs away. What would you say there to Julie? He's, he's not too old to lead, but we're not talking about leading a lot. We're going to do basics. Uh, matter of fact, what I usually do uh, when I am imprinting these animals, I take baling twine and I put a come-along hitch on them. And I just ask their nose to go to the right a little bit, the left a little bit, and then, uh, and then the next day I, a little bit more. But no, two weeks old, uh, he, he, uh, he definitely needs to have a come-along hitch on him and and uh and led around a little bit not you know not a lot you just gotta it's it's almost like a feel uh if he goes to pull him back on you you just kind of go with him let him feel a little bit of pressure all the time so he's kind of going backwards kind of wanting to pull against you that's okay just bump him and then release and bump him and release bump him and release and and he'll 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 pay attention but you need to be touching him because if he's that way at two weeks old at two years old, you're going to have more problems. So yeah. uh, I would definitely uh, get a hold of him, pet him everywhere, scratch him everywhere. Uh, but yeah, come along hitch is a wonderful thing to use. Now, why is the come along? We talk about it all the time. And folks, if you haven't heard of the come along rope and the come along hitch, yep. you're about to learn. This thing yeah. changes lives. And Steve, why is it so effective? Well, because it communicates fully to the nose, mules and donkeys have to learn what's right, what's wrong, and they learn that through their nose right here. So the thing is, most halters, people use chains. They use a chain across the top of the nose and underneath. They kill nerves here, they kill nerves here. But this waxed come along rope, you take and go around the nose, up over top behind the ears, and then here's the great thing about it. 
when I bump it and they respond forward, that gives them release. And you see, it does everything that that they are used to communicating with. Remember, folks, we got five communication things. We got comfortable, uncomfortable. So when we, when they want to be, they want to fight you a little bit. They want to, they want to make you uncomfortable, and they're pulling back. Just bump them, bump them, bump them. And then we're gonna ask, tell, demand. So ask, bump, bump, tell, bump, bump, bump. Demand, bump, 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 and they will respond, folks. But if you listen, if, if you go to try to just give them cookies to respond, it ain't gonna get it. Oh, that reminds me, Dave. Yeah. That new DVD that uh, you're sending out with every one hundred dollars worth of uh, gaining trust, they, getting results. Yeah, the newest video. That's an awesome video. I went back and I looked at it again uh, in the past couple of days, and I'd forgot. Uh, I look pretty good in that video. You look real good <laughs> in that video. <laughs> it was we got we got lots. I I was thinking, geez, look at that. It worked, and it it surprised me. You know. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. You know. So I I, I like that. Folks are gonna like that video. They're gonna like that. But going back, that come along hitch does everything they need to do, folks. If, uh, six months on that come along hitch, you'll have a completely different changed animal completely changed you know that means everywhere you go everything you do that come along hitch and and it, plus that here's the good thing about this Dave it teaches the people how to use their hands mm -hmm. teaches them how to use their hands see we don't work enough with their hands these days you know and so having that come along hitch and that lead rope that teaches you how to use your hands and then when you get your hands on them reins mm -hmm. they're like they're like jello in your hands you know they res you can feel the response and you can feel the respect. But folks, that come along hitch will change your life, I guarantee you. Yeah, it's amazing. And real quick, what Steve's talking about, let me see if I can bring it up here. Um, Y'all can see my screen uh, right here. Um, this is gaining trust, getting results. We went back through and we found one of Steve's, um, Steve's clinics from 2019 and we put it together as a very special video. Now this one's not sold anywhere. Uh, you'll find clips of it on YouTube, but the entire, the thing in its entire format, uh, it's not sold anywhere. Uh, but what we decided to do was we decided to say, you know what, uh, some of it's already available on YouTube. We're not going to sell people things that are available on YouTube, but we'll give away the entire video from start to finish so you don't have to go fishing around on YouTube uh, with any purchase of $100 or more. So I'll tell you what, folks, if you do not have the Ground Foundation starting kit, you need the Ground Foundation starting kit. And when you go yes. there and you purchase, it adds shipping, that puts you over 100 bucks, and you'll get this video. So go to the store, muleranch.com, get the Ground Foundation starting kit if you don't have it yet, and uh, and you'll get this video. It's digitally delivered. You'll get it right away. There's 11 parts. Steve, I went back through. There's a few more parts I'm going to add, so it'll probably wind up being 13 or 14 parts by the time it's wow. all finished, all said and done. But yeah, it's a really great video. Folks are really going to love it. That's not why we're here, but uh, it, yeah. it was part of the conversation. Uh, we'll keep moving here. Get the come along rope. Get the Ground Foundation starting kit. Um, Julie, I hope that that helps you. Mark Miller is here in Virginia. Uh, hey, talk Mark. about the ultralight saddle. Steve, what's the ultralight saddle going to be all about? Will you tell Mark real quick? Oh my. Uh, what we did is we imported some really nice uh, pre-dyed, very soft hide for these saddles. And I, I, it only weighs 20 pounds, Mark. I'm amazed. I've been, I rode that saddle the, this last week down at the Andrada when we were shipping cattle. And uh, it's the first time that I really spent a lot of time in the saddle. And I loved it. I, I was amazed. It took me a little bit to get my stirrups adjusted and get used to that soft feel. But it just, it doesn't pull on your legs. Uh, I didn't have any lower back problems. You know, it just, I rode in it all day long. And, and uh, it was pretty awesome. Dave, I'll have you ride that saddle when you're down there this next weekend. That'll be great. Yeah. That'll be a lot of fun. So, so it's uh, an awesome saddle. Uh, we're, we're putting together all new videos on that. Uh, we've got some new videos coming out for these new saddles. These new saddles, we've, we're, it, they're pretty awesome, folks. 
Uh, We're going to do some video recording this weekend, it. too, down at the Andrada Ranch. So Steve's family, yeah. my family, we're going to go down there, and we're going to have a good time, and we're going to get some new material that you all are really going to enjoy. It's going to be... Hey, do this, Dave. Do yeah. this. Ready? Do this. Take a big sniff. You know what that is? I'm smoking some ribs and I'm smoking oh. some pulled pork. <laughs> and I'm going to be bringing it down, and my three grand boys that you have are going to eat like pigs. They're going to uh, love it. Did you know that ribs are my favorite? Are they? I remember. Hey, oh. Mine too. I'm going to be, I got a, I got pulled pork. I'm oh. smoking it right now. The That's whole awesome. place just smells awesome. So, That's so good. when we go down this weekend, we're going to eat good. We're going to ride meals. We'll shoot some videos. Hey, we need to put some stuff on YouTube. We will. On YouTube. So That's that people be can great. see your boys riding and stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to see Stevie, how he <sighs> does. It's I can't wait. It's gonna He's be got. Fun. They're all. They're all hyped up. All right. All right. We'll talk more about that okay. later, y'all. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we're, yeah. <laughs> Steve and I are kind of getting caught up here. Uh, Misty is watching from uh, Signal Mountain, Tennessee. It's drizzling and 70 degrees here. Watching my 900 pound mini bull butt his tire around. Getting ready to do come along with my mule after I watch my favorite peeps, Misty. We are so glad to hear that. Uh, Julie, hey, Misty. yeah. Uh, yeah. She she lives close to where I was born, Irwin, Tennessee. Hey. I was born in Irwin, Tennessee, and uh -huh. Signal Mountain, my dad used to take me up on Signal Mountain when I had asthma. He'd take me up there so I could get good fresh air. How about that? It is a small world because Julie just texted back, and she said uh, Owensboro is where she's at in Kentucky. It's about two hours east of Paducah. It's a small oh. world. How, How cool. About that? Uh, all right, let's see here. Uh, Misty says the come along hitch will change your life. My donkey is very my donkey is very mouthy. Respects come along hitch, but when we are walking, we'll take uh, take it in his mouth. I bump and he drops it. Uh, Steve, should I keep doing it this way? Uh, he has always been a biter. Well, you go. How old is he? So that's a that's a good question, Misty. How old would you say uh, your mule is? Are, is it common for them to want to do that? Yeah, yeah, especially when they're young. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're under seven years old, they're they're teething, and it makes it feel good. But we gotta have we gotta have our mind on them when they do think about doing that. Uh, it's actually a pretty bad habit that mules and donkeys have. That's why I've designed my bit that I have. So they can't reach around and grab a hold of the bit to keep you from working with them. So my bit is designed to come back behind. That's a bad habit that mules and donkeys can have. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of in them, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's there. That they kind of want to control things, but it could be this donkey. If he's just a baby under seven, he could be teething. But otherwise, yes, it can be a bad habit that needs to be fixed. There you go, Misty. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, let us know. Hopping back over on Facebook, thank you to all of our YouTube people. We hop back and forth. Uh, Karen is here from Chile, Central Virginia. Love our mules more all the time. Uh, Joy is here. There we go. Giddy up. Uh, Joy is here. Uh, hi, Joy here. Raining this morning in Maryborough, Queensland, Australia. We've gone international again. Hey, Very good, so Joy. We're glad you're here. Uh, Art is here. Aloha from Kauai, Hawaii, little cloudy here at the moment. All right, so now we've gotten 49 U.S. states represented, the, the 49. Let's see. Good day from Australia. It's David Scholl. Cloudy hey. with possible showers. Gone Australian again. We've got Trace. Good day, Steve. And Dave from Lowood, Queensland. Steve, you are developing the name in Australia. How about that? Overcast here today. Currently great. 16 degrees. All right. Celsius, I'm sure, yeah. is what we're talking there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Steve, Linda is here. So glad to see you from Linda, the mule servant, and Theo, the soggy, one-eyed mule in cold, muddy Mount Vernon, Ohio. There we go. There's another Mount Vernon, Ohio. Yeah. Uh, let's that? see. Rachel Shepard says, I'm so excited. First time watching live. I also talked to Steve last week about a long road trip out this way this summer. Very good, Rachel. We're glad that you're here. Uh, Amy's here. Mules everywhere. Nat is headed to Amy Gann. So mule, Nat is headed to Open Arena. So I'm watching alone tonight. We're glad that you're here, Amy. Thank you so much for representing Nat well. All right, <laughs> Steve. Julie Jones has sent in a question via email. She posted it. 
posted it on the comment section before we went live, and she's got it here. I want to get Julie an answer. She says, right. I just bought a baby Molly that will be coming home in August. I used oh. to raise quarter horses, and now I show a mule. I raise many donkeys and have 50 or so. Uh, I also have experience with donkeys. What do you recommend I do with the new Molly in her first couple of years? Do you start them at three? Hey, by the way, I rent farmland to Walsh Washington Bulb Company. So you ha may have been to my farm, she says. Washington Bulb Com Company. How about that? Very Amazing. good. How about that? So the three so year old, what do you Julie recommend? A little bit. You have, so, okay. You know, we definitely want to, we want to stick with groundwork. Folks, I don't care if your mule is 30 years old or if it's 30 weeks old, you know, uh, you, you, you all cannot do enough of it. If you follow my, my, my mule communication video, uh, you know, called uh, ground communication, you will it, you will improve your communication you will improve the mules communication but most of all you'll show leadership that that mule and that donkey will respect uh, you can't do enough of it so when you bring that baby home <clears throat> number one remember folks anytime you bring your mules and donkeys home do not turn them out into a pastor i was just talking to a guy the other day um and and you wouldn't believe it dave he says i can't catch him i brought him home put him out in the pasture and that's it he's got 25 acres to run on i said partner get him caught put him in a 20 by 20 pin and there he stays for the next six months remember folks six months builds a foundation not 30 days not 90 days six months okay builds a foundation and when you bring these these mules home, put them in a 20 by 20 pen. Yes, they're going to throw a fit. Yes, they're going to pace up and down. Yes, they're going to be obnoxious, but they will get over it. You come to my ranch, you have 10 by 20 stalls. Every mule is in its own stall. My wife's mule, Stacy, uh, she spent 26 years in a 10 by 20 stall. Now, guaranteed, I mean, she was on the side of the mountain hunting and, and was a uh, training mule and, and, you know, pleasure mule and things like this. But her main home was 10 by 20. Folks, that's all they need. It's all they need. You will have a completely different mindset if you do that. But you turn them out in the pasture, you've lost. They will gain. They don't need you. They don't need you, and that's what you want. You want them to need you. You want them to see you as yeah. that herd leader. And a lot of times folks will say, why can't I catch my mule out in pasture? Well, why would your mule want to be caught in pasture? Has everything yeah. he needs. Doesn't need yeah. you for anything. Matter of fact, you're going to make him more uncomfortable than anything else. So, um, yeah, that's that's great there. Um, let's see here. So, Julie, uh, I'll make sure that I think she had another question. I'll make sure we get to it before we're done here. Uh, Faye is watching, says, good morning. So, good morning to you, Faye. Jack, checking in, 75 and sunny in Johannesburg, Michigan to get today. We're glad you're here, uh, Jack. Uh, let's see. David Pingelli says, I love my light. Can't say enough about it. We love hearing that, David. Love hearing that. Uh, let's see. Margie is here. Yay. Big hello from Gladstone, Queensland. All right. All of our Australian friends are here. All of Australians out there. Ginger's yeah. here. Says it's Ginger and Lucas from Georgia. Cool 59 degrees. I would take that out here. Jim here from Kingsport, Tennessee in East Tennessee. 56 degrees and raining for days. Man, I love oh the my. rain. Uh, Cass is here. Cass is back. Loving Steve's guidance. <coughs> Excuse me there. So the next question that I've got, Steve, this one's about the Martingale. Uh, Myra sent this in, says, uh, Hi, Dave, I have a question for Steve. Maybe to talk about it this Wednesday. You got it, Myra. We'll get it right now. How does the Mule Riders Martingale connect and work? Is it like a running Martingale, run under the chin, through the bit side rings, or does Steve think, uh, or something else, does Steve think it's something uh, for training or to always use when riding? Steve, give us some bigger perspective on the Mule Riders Martingale, when to use it, and why it works. Okay. The Mule Riders Martingale is a tool I started developing probably 25 years ago. And and I, I used it simply because 
the mule would stick his nose out, elevate his head, and take off running, and and or take off bucking or whatever, you know. So this way here, by using the martingale, I was able to set the nose, set the head, and especially with my clients that I would have uh, in my clinics and this sort of thing, they were not always intent in tune with the nose going in place. But one of the main reasons that I used that was so that I could put them in the round pen with a sur single and nobody on their back. And that's one thing you can see in the video that comes with the martingale. There's nobody on the mule's back and you'll see the mule frame himself up, get himself balanced and change his attitude. And at first his attitude was pretty grumpy. Uh, I didn't want to do this, yada, yada. And he had been kind of spoiled by a person that was that owned the mule and kind of buggered her. But anyway, long story short, uh, it it builds good head balance, nose balance. It uses a double twist wire snaffle bit, which is way easier than a smooth snaffle bit. And and what the way it works is this. Yes, similar to a running martingale, but the running martingale constantly puts pressure upon the mule and donkey, and I don't want to do that. I want to be able to give them some relief that if their head's in the air, then it's going to make contact. If the head, if the nose is on the vertical, then they're they're going to get relief. So going back, the rope, the 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 uh, it's it's a it's a um, the nylon uh, parachute cord that attaches into the reins, goes up through the snaffle bit, and goes down to an adjusting strap that goes between the legs. And I use it for six months building a foundation. And and in that six month time frame, training four to six hours a week, I'm going to eventually in three months wean my my mule, my donkey, off of the martingale. And in about three months, when I can one handed with my martingale, which normally it's used two handed direct reining, okay? Uh, with that martingale, when I can one-handed back up, one-handed go to the right, one-handed go to the left. Remember, normally it's two hands. When I can do that, I can start introducing my trail bit, my uh, uh, correctional mouthpiece. And then eventually I'll be using the martingale, and then I'll switch and use the correctional bit, and then I'll use the martingale, then I'll use the trail rider bit, correctional bit, and then and pretty soon... I'll get to where I'm, I'm weaning off of the martingale and fully on to the trail rider bit. Now, should I go and be moving cows? And there's lots of brush, lots of canyons, steep places and stuff like this. And there's boogers can jump up all the time. Javelina, calves, things that would startle the mule. With that mule rider's martingale, I have control. So even though my mule, quote, may be a reigning mule, easy to ride, I ride in that martingale so that I have control. So that, to answer your question, it is not the, it's not the everyday bit to be used, but if I have a new situation uh, or if I've got a train, out comes the martingale. I use it uh, when I go hunting, I ride in the martingale because obviously when I go hunting, I can have dead animals, I can have different things going on and I've got control uh, and then and when I say I get really good uh, usually after about a year or so I'll be really consistent in trail rider bit very good uh, yeah mule rider martingale is a wonderful tool uh, we talk about it a lot folks always tend to have questions about it and we love answering those questions so Myra hopefully that gives you some perspective helps you decide if that's really what you're looking for right now if that's going to help you get to where you need to be and if you have any follow-up questions Myra or anybody watching just please let us know and that said uh, if you are watching for the first time or if you're just hopping in and catching us you know kind of midway here I want to welcome you uh, my name's Dave and this is Steve Edwards. Every Wednesday, we come and we do a live clinic for mules and donkeys. This is our Q&A clinic. And yep. uh, really, there's only three things we ask. The first one is that you let us know you're watching. Uh, so it's not weird. Just me and Steve here 
talking to ourselves. Like we like talking to each other, uh, but we want to know that you're here and that you're watching. So say your name in the comment section, where you're watching from and what the weather's like. Uh, and you'll meet a whole lot of fantastic people in the comment section as well. We've really built a, a great community here, a, a, a mule and donkey family, if you will, uh, of folks who just like-minded folks. And it's a lot of fun. The second thing is that we ask that you ask any question that you have, uh, Sharon, whatever it is you're working through right now, if you want any insight or if you have a question, put that in there. Uh, not only does that help you get better results, but it makes this broadcast, this, this show a lot better because we get real questions from real folks who are going through real training. And that's what makes this a special show. Me and Steve get here just talk about, you know, my kids and his kids and the ranch and barbecue. We could do that, but we're here to answer your questions and really make this a special thing uh, for the mule and donkey community. And the third thing that we ask is uh, first is let, let us know you're here. Second is ask your question. And the third is that you tag friends and family in the comment section who are interested in equine, mules and donkeys specifically, uh, or folks who are interested in learning more about them. And maybe this is a direction they want to go for a hobby or for, yeah. fun, for, for some fun or, or you know, maybe do some ranch life stuff, some cowboy. Tag them. So with that said, uh, the next question we've got here, this one comes from Art. Art, we're glad you're watching. He says, I have a 24-year-old Molly that can't keep weight on. I floated her teeth two weeks ago. Is there any special feed I can give her? Steve, do we want to make sure that we keep weight uh, on a 24-year-old Molly? And then if so, what does that nutrition look like? Well, it, it, I like to see a little rib on my meals, folks. I don't like to see them fat. you got to remember, you're putting a horse body on donkey legs and donkey feet, and it's not good for them. You, know? uh, you need to... Uh, uh, you need to consider that and if he truly is thin then yeah you can go in and and put him on a good uh, on a good diet and, and that's also going to depend upon your uh, on, on your use so we've got uh, well let's see we got that one uh, article mules can't stand prosperity and that's a good deal talking about the feed and this sort of thing uh, and then we got the uh, video from uh, uh, with Lake oh, and Millen. Yeah. Lake and Millen, yeah, that'll help you out. The folks, the feeding program is really super important. And and when it comes down to the feeding program, uh, it's going to depend on the need and use of your mule. Now, d don't expect you just got the teeth floated. Don't expect her to put feed on, weight on right away. Uh, it uh, It's going to be a, a process. And so... Uh, what's your feeding program now? You know, That's what, a good what, question. What a on a pasture? When it comes to the feeding program, what's maybe like the top one, two things uh, mistakes folks make when it comes to the actual feeding program that they have? Well, other uh, than not having mistakes, a feeding program. Yeah, by not having a feeding program, by just putting them out on a pasture, that's the biggest mistake you can make. Biggest mistake you can make. Don't just turn them out. In, out on a pasture, a smorgasbord. If you want to see how ugly that grass founder can be, wait till you see a mule grass founder. It is is terrible. Donkey with grass founder. Too many carbohydrates out there, folks. It's like turning us loose out on a smorgasbord. Oh my goodness, you know, it's not good. So that's number one thing. Number two thing, feed now alfalfa hay. No, 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 no. Again, too many carbohydrates, not so much the protein, but the carbohydrates. Now the next thing is feeding too much grain. I can't tell you how many people just this week are telling me they're feeding grain. And they said, my mule, I can't control him. Get rid of the grain. Don't be feeding grain. Feed grain only, only, only when you're getting ready to go on a ride, but don't make it an everyday part of the diet. And if you can't get the lake and light or the pellet, then a good quality grass hay is, is Timothy Hay, something like that is good. And there again, folks, just because you're feeding hay doesn't mean it's going to be the same quality from year to year to place to place. Uh, when you go and you buy feed, folks, try to buy enough feed for the year because otherwise that hay can change. If 
You might buy a couple of bales of, of hay today from the feed store and a month later go and buy a couple more bales. That can be complete, from completely different pasture and you can have lots of problems with it. So uh, anyway, that's just some examples that uh, your feeding program is extremely, extremely important. Very good. All right, Steve. So I am sending you a. Uh, I'm sending you some photos right now, and these photos uh, come from uh, come from one of our viewers. Uh, she got herself uh, a rescue. I think it is. Let me read the question here. Um, uh, I was curious if you could give me some help. I just took this injured girl in. Supposedly, she is thin because her injuries were so bad that she wouldn't get up to eat. I have never dealt with the mule. I am trying to get back weight on her, so we're talking about feet here. Her wounds are starting to heal, and she has gone two days without lying on the ground for long periods of time. So I feel like we're making progress. I just need to get her healthy again. So there should be some photos that are coming in, and uh, and while those are while those are being sent to you, I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let folks take a look here. Let me let me bring them up and uh, and show the the pictures here. And so uh, we've got four pictures. We've got one uh, just kind of of the ribs and and the belly a little bit there. Uh, we've got another picture. Um, this second picture is of the of the feet, uh, and then we've got uh, another picture closer up, and you can just see she's got some real injuries on her, kind of on her ankles there. I have this video. Have the pictures come in for you yet, Steve? Is it supposed to be here on the phone? Yeah, it'd be oh, there, there on the is. phone. Got yeah, it. and then we've got. Ah, she does not say. Let me let me um, let me see if I can uh, if I can bring that up here, but. Uh, yeah, just dealing with some injuries there, and uh, and it doesn't sound like it was a rescue. It sounds like just not healthy. Um, so who knows what the backstory is there? But I, I know she's concerned about the weight. I know she's concerned about the sores and the overall well-being. So we're taking a look at these pictures here, Steve. What would what would you start with on this one? Uh, we got a, a animal that we really want to care for and be compassionate with. Well, looking at the pictures now, this mule's got a uh, SB bar. Hmm. Good looking mule. What? Looks, fair, looks like a fairly young mule, too. It does, so, yeah. So, in looking at this, yeah, she does, you know, she could definitely use some weight, but in looking at this, looks like she had that leg injury on that left rear which looks like it's better now mm -hmm. that's a good looking mule well bred well bred mule um what so what makes you say that what what is it that you're seeing that makes this mule look like a well-bred mule i'm looking at its top line his back okay. and his neck and his head nice and keen uh when you put a brand on an animal a that's called a that's called a uh, that brand there is is done by by cold brand so that's why it's so white i'm not sure who the who, who the sb bar is there's so many people breeding these days but just looking at the general confirmation of this mule uh it's a good looking mule but it's had some horrible injuries uh and it looks like she's done, done a good job of doctoring so probably the best thing to do you know, you see how that, that one leg is really swelled up there? Yeah, you can see it and there. And it looks a whole lot better now. Uh, that's called, a, that could be a lower bow. Uh, or it could even be, uh, 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 well, who knows? I'm just speculating there. But what's the history on this meal? Wow. Yeah, so maybe we want to get some more uh, some more information here. I will... I will message back. Uh, I'll message her back and let her know that we took a look and have her come take a look at this video here. Uh, but folks, this is a this is just a great example of how, man. If you've got some questions, you can send in some pictures and and Steve will start the conversation with you. So we'll get back in touch uh, with Jenny and make sure that we get some yeah, more I information. Yeah, want to get the age of the mule and does she know anything about the S S B Bar brand? I'd I'd like to look that up and see what's going on with that. You know that that mule there was a pretty pricey mule at one time. So yeah, um, I'd like more information on it. Let's see. I'm just gonna say, hey, we're talking, and Steve would really like uh, some additional information. What'd you say? The uh, the age, yeah, um, where you got uh, the mule from, 
anything else you can think of. So we'll see what she says and maybe revisit this next week. Very good. Thank you for that, Steve. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, let's continue on here. I'm hopping back over on YouTube. And uh, Misty has a, a follow-up and says, How much slack on the Martingale rope to the Sir single? Seems like I have too much on the tightest notch. What is a good amount of slack from the Sir single up to the Martingale? Well... That, that's going to be the reins. <clears throat> and what we don't want to do is make them tight. So here's a general rule of thumb. If the mule can get his head down to the ground, they're too loose. If the, the mule can get his head down within about eight inches of the ground, they're just about right. So I would have to see a picture of the surcingle and the, and the martingale on the animal to know about how much it's adjusted. Now, there's a video that comes with the martingale and it says adjust it like this. So you might want to go back and revisit that video. Uh, that'll probably help you out quite a bit. Very good. So go back, revisit the Mule Riders Martingale. And if you've got some pictures that you want to send, Steve, make sure you're doing it right. Hey, send those in. Let's make sure you do it the right way the first time uh, yep. so you, you get the results you're looking for and you don't cause problems down the road. Uh, let's see. We've got Jim watching, still working to find correct feed pellets for my mule here out in the east. And so what you had said, Steve, was uh, number one, you could feed, if you don't have access to the pellets, you could do a real nice Timothy Hay. Uh, make sure that you get a good cut. And then the other thing you've talked about is taking the ingredients that we see on the Mules Can't Stand Prosperity article, taking those yep. into your local feed store and say, hey, here's what I'm looking for. What do you have? Is that there still the best you have to offer there in terms of if they can't get lake and light? Yeah, and they can't. You know, I realize, I think uh, to New Mexico is about as far as they can go in Colorado uh, to the south. And of course, it's all over California and all over Arizona, but if you could take the ingredients in and say to your feed company, what do we have like this, that'd be good. Now, I can also tell you that your hay pellets, your hay cubes, uh, which you find a lot of out west out here, are really good for feed, and, and they can be anywhere from the size of a golf ball uh, to the size of your thumb, you know, and, and they're, they're, they do really well. Okay, so I'm putting a link in the comment section here for folks to get themselves back to that Mules Can't Stand Prosperity, see the ingredients that are listed there, and then do right by their animal, go in and find uh, find the feed that's going to be uh, most like that, and then get on a nutrition program. Erica says, watching in western Oklahoma, overcast and 80, can't wait for this weekend. I get to try my Steve Edward saddle with breast collar and britching. Uh, I found a lady <laughs> who was selling. I will send a pic. We get that question a lot if we've got used saddles, and, and uh, what Erica could probably attest to is that they're hard to find. That's yeah. that's one reason why we don't deal in used saddles is we just they're hard to find. There's not a whole lot of them out there because they hold their weight. They last for a long time, and uh, and folks love them. Occasionally, there will be one out there if a mule passes yeah. and they're ready to, to move on. So, Erica, if you need anything, you know, just let us know. And, Erica, make sure you get the free mule saddle training course. Uh, you're going to appreciate being able to go through that and uh, and get everything set up correctly. So glad to hear that, Erica. Uh, David Pengelly, if I am going to go camping for the weekend and I trailer, ride, tie to the trailer, how long can my mule stand up without lying down? That's a good practical question. Well, I, I literally, Dave, I've literally seen these mules stand the whole weekend. Um, oh, you know, and, and this sort of thing. I can tell you that that uh, in watching mules over the years, they got to be really tired for them to lay down. Uh, and here's the thing a lot of folks don't realize, Dave, that when these equines lay down, all their guts kind of quit. Mm. They, they, they don't move a lot real mm. good. They have to be in motion for their large and small intestines and their, their stomach and this sort of thing to work correctly especially the large and, t and small. And that's one of the reasons that I tell people, don't lay your mules down to get on them. Uh, I, I, I can tell you some horror stories where people have actually twisted a gut, but that's another whole story. Uh, but you know, you, you, they, you know Dave, uh, they actually make an arm that you can put 
that comes and tight attaches to the side of the trailer and then you can have an overhead uh, uh, tie to it mm. and and you can give the mule then about uh, about eight foot of rope but you want to be careful folks all the time when you give them a bunch of rope they got a chance of getting a leg hung up or the saddle hung up on it and several things like that but i've literally had them stand all day long i mean all for a whole yeah uh, three or four days uh, to the side of the trailer and, and be just fine you know? That's a good question. Never had that question before. Thank you nope. so much, David. Uh, Lauren's watching. Uh, Lauren says, hi, sorry if this isn't how this works, but I was wondering, she's going to ask a question. Lauren, this is how it works. We're so glad that you're here. Yeah, uh, yeah. She says, I was wondering, I'm starting to look at getting a second horse since I was a kid, uh, or second horse since I was a kid, and I've been looking at mules, and I was wondering if you had any tips. So, Steve, I'm going to, I'm just going to massage Lauren's questions here a little bit. Sounds like she's thinking between a horse, maybe a mule, weighing the options. What's a real big difference other than the obvious that we believe the mule is the superior of the equine? Other than the obvious, what yeah. are some of the things folks may want to consider when they're evaluating horse versus mule? And then maybe what do they want in a mule? Well, one, number one thing with either one of them, horse or mule, disposition. Disposition, disposition. You get that first. That's why I try to tell a lot of people, don't go buying babies and and raise them up because I've had babies flat not get along with somebody, but that's another story. But disposition, but if you really want a smooth ride, I mean absolutely smooth, sure-footed ride, the mule does it. Uh, think about this, Lauren. What do they ride at the Grand Canyon? One of the toughest places in the world to ride besides here at my ranch, <laughs> uh, but toughest places there. What do they ride? A uh, mule, a uh, mule. And uh, they do that because the mule has got a natural ability to think things through, where to go, the right places to go. When a mule puts his foot down, mm. it's exactly where he wants it. He can, now, I also gotta say now, he can be the most unsafe animal in the world too because all equine, all equine, bite and kick and run off and buck and this sort of thing. Don't think I'm going to buy a mule. It's going to be perfect. No, no, no. Yeah. You know, uh, you can have a problem. But for me, don't ever offer me a green mule or a broke horse. I'm going to ride that green mule and just for his natural ability of taking care of himself on the side of a mountain, I'm going to ride that green mule. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you what. So I, a lot of folks think that um, I know I look like a cowboy. A lot of those think that yeah. I'm, a, you know, born and raised cowboy. Uh, I'm not. I'm a city slicker. But I've learned a lot, um, and uh, and I pick up on a lot. And so I've only actually ridden twice. And the two times I've ridden, there's one thing that I've really, really noticed, and just completely green. Don't I just hear Steve say stuff and I can repeat it, but I don't know anything. The thing that I've noticed is they know where they're putting their feet. They are watching where they are putting their feet. And you can see them move their feet and almost see the wheels turning in their brain, figuring it out. There was, I've told this uh, probably two or three times. The first time I ever rode, I was riding Steve's wife's mule, Stacy. And, uh, and Steve said, Hey, do you want to ride? I said, yeah, let's go back out there. First time I ever rode. And so we went into Steve's backyard, which if y'all come out to Queen Valley Mule Ranch for a clinic, you're going to get to see Steve's backyard and it is quite the backyard. So we went out there and it nice, smooth ride, smooth ride. Yeah. Smooth ride. And then we get to this quarry and it's, and I see Steve go ahead and I mean, it is an incline. It's not just like down and up. It is an incline. And I start to feel nervous. And I was like, Steve, what do I do? And Steve goes, just let her go. She'll do what she needs to do. You'll get across. And so I just kind of let loose. I said, here. And we you know, kicked a little bit and we went. And you saw foot after foot moving where it yeah. needed to go. It was amazing. Yeah. I loved it. It was so much fun. So yeah, they are, they're an incredible animal. And just spending a few hours with them for the first time, like you see it right away. So I'm excited to get some, spend some time this uh, weekend with them down at the Andrada Ranch. Uh, we did have a follow-up question here, or not a follow-up question, another question from Melissa. 
Melissa says, Steve, is riding bareback ever okay for mules or is a saddle the only way to ride? And Lauren wants to know uh, the question to this one as well. She says, oh yeah, that's something I'd like to know too. Well, a lot of people ride bareback, you know, that, that like to do it. Uh, I'm personally not a bareback person because of the, the country that we ride, the trails that we ride, they're, they're hard, they're tough. So ride, ride bareback, sure. If you if you can got a good mule and want to do it, do it. Um, but also remember this: your saddle has bars. Those bars evenly distribute. Oh, pardon me. Uh oh. Oh goodness! Oh goodness! It's, it's only back. Wednesday, Steve. It's only yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> evenly distribute the weight across the mule's back. That meal was never designed for us to be on their backs, but the bar of the saddle helps evenly distribute it so that the meal can handle your weight. Now, I know most of you girls only weigh about 100 pounds anyway, um, and so it, it's, it's not going to matter a whole lot, but, you know, you could definitely ride bareback just like you can a horse, uh, but I would, you know, I spend the time in a saddle, but if you want to ride bareback, enjoy it. Good, uh, good question. Good answer. Love talking about that. Uh, we've got uh, Lauren with a follow up. So Lauren asked horse mule. She says, are the mules able to do the same things as horses? Because I'd like to try just about everything from jumping to bareback to archery, maybe jousting and trail riding too. What would you say, Steve? This is this is really good. I like I like this. Don't ever challenge me mule against horse because I'm going to take my mule and I'm going to do everything the horse can uh but i'm gonna do it better you know that's the way i look at it that mule uh if you go to bishop the world championships which they're not going to have this year because of this covert 19 problems but uh you can see them working cattle we can see them jumping you can see them pulling wagons mules are extremely versatile you know um and, and uh, uh, old max johnson he did this poem one time and he says well, they're born in old Kentucky and others raised in Tennessee. You'll find them in Wyoming, but that's not the only place they'll be. They're working up in Idaho and Oregon and such. And the Sierras of California, well, they're working by the bunch. Well, you can ride and you can drive and you can tack. When it comes to versatility, there's nothing that they lack. Some folks say they're stubborn, but you'll only hear that from a fool. Because the animal that's best of them all is definitely the mule so yeah oh yes the, the donkey they're, they're awesome what oh and, and then you go oh yes and the donkey too oh absolutely hey the donkey is the brains of that mule yeah you know, abs i never never thought i'd see the day where i see so many donkeys be ridden yeah it's yep. amazing and and of course i had my own donkey on my own jack years ago but i was rare and now I'm not rare. I'm well done because everybody's got them fine donkeys. <laughs> Very good. All right, let's see. Karen's watching from Raymond, California. I'm ready to order my tap. All right, Karen, get that order in, and we will get them out to you. And you can get that video. Folks, so we talked about this earlier. Just a heads up. If you do not have the Ground Foundation starting kit, I want you to get Steve wants you to get that for two re we want you to get it now for two reasons number one you need to have it your mule needs to know that you're the herd leader you need to know how to think and talk like the mule like the donkey you get that communication kit it's going to put you in herd leadership mode but now is the time to get it because yeah. any order over a hundred dollars now through the end of may we're going to send you uh, Steve's live clinic from last year uh, gaining trust getting results, talking and thinking like a mule and donkey. Um, so it's it, there's clips of it available on YouTube, so we're not going to sell it, but we put the whole thing together in one long video, things that aren't available on YouTube in long sections into this video. You want to get it. You want to get it. It's really, really good stuff. Steve said earlier, oh man, I forgot about that, went through it. Yeah, there's some really good stuff there. Yeah. There is. It's really, really good information. Get the Mule Saddle Train Course or anything over $100. Just make sure you get that order in and we'll get you taken care of. Jax here says, quick reply for Jim Rice about pellets for mules in East. I've been feeding Tribute Calm and, and Easy 
for a year and a half. In the summer, I do let the graze, let them graze for half an hour each day in the summer with a grazing muzzle. It is a complete feed. Compare the product tag with other complete feeds, a little discount by the ton. So there you go. A little bit of help. Uh, Jack is recommending the Tribute Calm and Easy. Uh, calm and easy. Uh, so look into that. If it if it looks like it's a fit, yeah. hey, fantastic. If you Let think you know. might want to look for something that might be a little bit closer, I, I don't know the ingredients. Uh, it's you got to do your due diligence, and that's what I love about this community is we've got folks that are willing to help folks out. Jim says thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Ahmed's here, 80 above and 45 mile per hour winds, Midwest, North Dakota. Steve, how oh do you transition from a direct rain to a neck rain? So what's a direct rain? What's a neck rain? And how do you go from the one to the other? Okay. So direct raining is where I use two hands and I give direction impulsion. That's what I did at the Andrada direction. Ranch. Yep. Impulsion. And by doing that, that starts building a neck rein. Now, the day you can one-handed pick up on the reins and back up, go to the left, go to the right with that martingale, is the day you can start transitioning to the uh, trail rider bit. And so remember now, everything's a six-month time frame. So there's the video that comes with the Mule Riders Martingale and then we got the video called, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, oh, I did that again. I did it last week, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, it happens. And, and I just you lost got a lot it. of videos. Uh, yeah, and, and, and matter of fact, I sent you a copy of it. Just sent you a copy. Oh, uh, Basic Equitation. Yeah. yeah, Basic Equitation. So Basic Equitation is going to help you with the neck reining and, and, and building the leg communication and the the uh, Mule Riders Martingale is going to give you ground foundation and your direct reining. There you go. Awesome. Very good. Okay, let's keep moving on here. I got another question. This one came in. Um, actually, this is uh, Julie's second question, and so it kind of tags along with her first story. But she just says, how old does a mule need to be to start training? We get this question a lot. Steve, we'll put an article together on the website because folks want to know how old does a mule need to be to start training? I start training from the day they drop on the ground. I train them to pick up their feet. I train them to let me put my finger in their mouth. I train them to put their finger up underneath the tail. Uh, I, you know, I rub them all around. I start training from the day they hit the ground imprinting. Then as they progress, as they're babies, they learn to pick up all four feet. They learn how to lead with the come along hitch. Then as they progress, uh, we can start putting a sur single on them. I use a sur single before a saddle. And one thing I was sharing with Julie earlier yesterday when I was talking with her, d folks, don't just take a kid saddle and put on there and say, I want to see if it's going to help her. No, it's not. It's going to put pressure in the wrong places. You're building a foundation for the life of this mule or donkey. So do everything correct. Put the right fit and saddle on there, put the breeching on there, breast collars, everything, so that you build a proper foundation. And so, when, now, when I'm going to start riding, I'm going to start riding when the knees are closed in the two years and, and six months, the three year time frame. When the knees are closed, you'll see the hair be different on the knees. It'll be straighter, it'll be curly when the knees are, are not closed. Now, the best way to tell it these days is we have veterinarians with really good machine, good uh, other ways to be able to, to test that out. But I start riding them after the knees are closed, and then I start putting pretty consistent time on them. Very good. Uh, good, good question, and uh, thanks for the answer, Steve. Appreciate it. All right, let's see here. 
Uh, Jim is watching from Alabama. Super glad that you're here, Jim. He's over on YouTube. Uh, let's see. Mark Miller says, uh, how much is the ultralight saddle? Mark, we're going to be getting that on the website here. I think next week we'll have everything live. We'll have it ready to go. Um, and, uh, and we'll talk about it on next week's broadcast uh, and just make sure we get an update. Ray is watching. He says, listening from Santa Cruz Mountains, 70 degrees, partly cloudy with a slight breeze. Long time listener. <laughs> sounds like a sounds like a weatherman there, Ray. You did a good job. Uh, any yeah. recommendations on the side? Size of a mule for an athletic six foot two hundred and eighty pound man. Yep, I get you. As a matter of fact, I know where one is now that I think about it in New Mexico. It's a Percheron mule. Dave, I, I got kind of a, a sad story. I've yeah. got one of my apprentices uh, that had uh, he did it. He went through the apprenticeship program just to do it. He was a nurse on the Navajo Indian Reservation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and just a great guy. Bob was just a, a great guy. Uh, him and his little wife, they moved to New Mexico and, uh, and retired there. And here just about five months ago, he, got, um, he found out he had cancer. Mm. And so the type of cancer that he has, he can work his way through it, but he's worried about his mules and doesn't, mm. want, to, uh, uh, doesn't want the mules just standing around and stuff. So he has four nice mules for sale, two of them Pertron. So this feller, athletic, 280 pound feller, uh, he should really contact me and then I'll have, I'll give him the information and he can talk, contact Bob in New Mexico. But let me tell you, I trained on these two mules, oh, 15 years ago. Uh, they were really, really nice mules now. And, and Bob, he's, uh, by golly, he, uh, uh, he hunted with them. He moved cows with them. He trail ride, rode them. They were nice mules, but he needs a good sized Pertron type mule. And and these mules actually also named after some good friends of mine who used to live here from Ohio. You know, uh, Bonnie and Grace. So anyway, uh, we can visit. I gave them your information, and uh, thanks for sharing that, Steve. So, hey, we've got folks all the time saying, hey, I'm looking for a Steve Edwards trained mule. Well, if you're interested, uh, reach out to Steve, get in touch, and uh, we'll put you in touch with the, the – we, we kind of just turn that over and put you in touch with the people who uh, – who we know about. Um, he says, uh, Ray follows up by saying, I'm interested in a mule for hunting and pleasure riding. Also interested in a gated mule. Any thoughts? Well, hey, Ray, let me tell you folks about this gated thing. I've had fox trotters, nice mules. I've had Tennessee walkers, nice mules. But Ray, when you're on the side of a mountain and there's no trails, that gated stuff, throw it right out the window, okay? Because they're not going to gate they're going to be busy watching where they are going. They're going to be busy taking care of you on their back. So if if I was to tell you where I'd go, I'd go with a good Pertron type mule, a good Belgian type mule, 280 pounds. You're not a little guy. Matter of fact, Toby Cook, we got some. 180 uh, pounds, Steve, 180 pounds. Oh, 180 pounds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, heck, 180 pounds. He's just about like my weight, you know. <laughs> yeah, six yeah. two. Your your height and your weight there, Steve. Uh, yeah, I, I wish I was six two. Yeah, <laughs> I, six, I do too. Oh, six two and one hundred eighty pounds. Ah, oh, he's a skinny kid, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. All right. Well, you know, you can go about anything you want, man. The thing is, folks, gated is overrated. All right. Yes, it rides pretty nice, but your mules have a nice single foot. You know, uh, and can really go, really do nice. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to pay the price of a gated animal. So, but, but 180 pounds, I thought you said 280 pounds. So, yeah. Yeah, so, sorry he, he about that. You can get that. about anything. That's all right. My there fault. There you go. My hearing, I'm sure. Uh, let's see. Well, and, and the internet. Uh, we, can, we can say the internet does all these great things, and we'll just blame it whenever whenever we want. Uh, Lauren says, so she's asking about the horse versus mule. Uh, so can you not leave them out in pasture at all without keeping a grazing muzzle or limiting how much they graze? So Lauren, the, the, the thought behind that there is really just this idea that if you put us at a buffet, we're just going to start eating, right? And start packing it on. And the mule and the donkey, they're yep. the same. They'll go out there. They'll just start eating. 
Um, and uh, and you don't know exactly what's out there. You don't know what they're going to get. You don't know what they're going to eat. You don't know what it's going to do to their digestive system. You don't know how much they're getting. Uh, you know how much they're working, but you don't know how much they're getting. And so what Steve advocates for, what Steve really recommends is saying, hey, keep them, keep them uh, in their stall. Know exactly how much you're feeding them. Make them dependent upon you for their feed. Yep. Know exactly yep. what they're getting, not just the quantity, but what they're actually getting. And that's going to put you into really good shape to have a nice animal where you feed according to use. So if, if you're not using them, you'll alter the amount of feed you're given. If you're using them a lot, you'll alter the amount of feed that you're giving them. And so that's really where the – it has nothing to do with leaving them out to pasture – can't, they can't be left out there. It has everything to do with their eating. Steve, anything else you'd add? No, that, uh, that's a You trained good, me uh, good, huh? Yeah, you did. I was <laughs> sitting here thinking, boy, listen to him. He's uh, really doing good, you know. I kind of, I was like, you know what? I think I, I we get this one a lot. I'm going to I'm going to try my hand a little bit. Folks, let me know how I did. You did uh, all right. right. Jim's watching from Alabama. Lisa says, can I use side range to lunge my mule? What is lunging? Well, lunging is when people hold a rope and ask them to go around in a circle behind them. I never suggest to anybody to lunge a mule. It's What they do is they end up with a long rope. They end up pulling on them, end up tightening all five major neck muscles, and then they end up learning how to run through their shoulder. And then when people start riding them, now the mule knows how to run through the shoulder, but now it's gotten really good at it because you taught him about that with that long lunge rope. Very good. Um, let's see here. Let's keep moving right along. Ray says, perfect. Thanks for the advice. Sabra's here watching from South Carolina. We're so glad that you're here, Sabra. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let me look here over on Facebook. Make sure that we've got everyone here. Um, just trying to catch up. Uh, Facebook jumps all the way to the bottom and then I have to always scroll back up. Sierra says, um, oh my goodness, Steve, I just realized it's 407. Time is just flying by. Uh, let's, let's see if we can wrap up these last couple questions here. Right. Sierra says, my almost three year old mule appears to have stifle catch. Should he oh. grow out of it? I'm not riding. Oh man! What is stifle catch? We've never well, I've never heard when, that. When one is stifled, that means he's got a muscle uh, that has that you know. It happens a lot of ways. Sometimes they'll be playing and they'll slip in the mud and pull pull a muscle. Uh, but what it amounts to is, as the foot goes, the leg comes up in the air and all of a sudden kind of jerks a little bit and then goes back down. Uh, my my granddaughter Nat. She she got she's the mule that she's training on right now for this uh, uh, um, for the oh, competition competition that the, yeah I, I got to get the name of that thing down pat for this competition it had this stifle problem and and there's a lot of different new things you can do you can do shoeing and things like this but it's sometimes it depends on how bad the stifle is sometimes they're crippled for life and they're just going to be a pasture ornament but uh you know get a good vet that knows what he's doing and you probably pull him out of it that's that's good feedback um linda says i love to ride a horse bareback but i swear i have never hurt my tailbone so bad as i did just riding in a couple circles bareback on theo who is a 10 year old quarter mammoth mule i sure hope it didn't hurt his back as much as it hurt my backside just sitting here sitting there uh what a pointy animal so good feedback there lauren um if you're yep. watching still uh linda's got some feedback linda is uh linda's just Everything that we see, everything that we read from her, she really uh, takes good care of Theo, and she does her best to do right by him. So that's some good feedback. Uh, Yolanda says, Steve, do you like frogs? Quaking at night? If so, watch your messenger. <laughs> frogs quaking at night. I don't know if I've ever heard of such a thing. You'll have to show me what's in your messenger. Uh, Yolanda, Joe, you are a character. We love you there. She just me a message a minute ago. Now, you know, Dave, she was saying, you know, how... I got to get after Jolanda a little bit here. She found in the Netherlands one of my saddles used. No kidding. 
Yeah. And I remember the lady that bought the saddle. <laughs> she was just a little gal, and she had some donkeys in the Netherlands and stuff. Anyway, Yolanda found a used Steve Edwards saddle in the Netherlands. How about they it? Something else. I got a story to tell you about David Scholl, too. Anyway. Let's hear it. So, so she gets it all rigged up. She's on it. She's got pictures. She said, I am so happy. She says, tell me what size it is. And I said, that's a 16. Oh, good. It looks really nice. Well, a couple of days later, she, she emails me. And she says, Steve, is it, does it happen very often where the cinches loosen up? And I says, yeah, it happens all the time. It's just part of life going down the trail. And she says, my cinches loosened. And, I, and I, I went to get off my mule and I fell. And the mule took off bucking. And remember, Yana says she never has any problems. Folks, never say never. You know, these are animals, they're equine, and as good as Yolanda is, she runs into a difficult thing. But yeah, so I can't wait to see the, the quaking uh, frogs. The quaking David frogs. Scholl, yeah. David Scholl, David yeah. Scholl, Australia, was watching, I don't know where he got it, but he got one of my first trail light saddles. Yeah. That's almost 15 years old. Yeah. He found it in America and had it shipped to the United to Australia. How about that? And he, he got it for nickels and dimes. Lucky How about rascal. That? Good for yeah. him. Uh, Danielle is here watching, uh, says, uh, uh, talking about the, the Pertron. Pertron. Uh, she goes, my mule is a Pertron mix. Awesome combo. Isabel's watching, says, uh, use the flexible Philly grazing muzzle by Thin Line. So there's a recommendation. Steve has one as well. Just get yourself a good muzzle. if you're. Uh, we talked about having a good muzzle. If uh, you're out on the trail, especially if uh, if the animal is kind of like moving this way, trying to bring down, grab grass or whatnot, have a muzzle on them uh, for safety, and yep. then have a muzzle on them if they're out at pasture. Um, let's see. Uh, Linda says, "How do I attach spurs to my boots? I can order spurs online, but we don't have a store in rural Ohio that sells spurs, especially with the coronavirus restrictions." Man, is that a complicated thing? No, it's not. Now, they can actually go on Amazon and, and buy spur straps. But it's going to depend on the type of, of spurs that you have uh, as to the type of strap. Now, I prefer a big wide strap that goes over my boot. I don't like the narrow one. Mm. But no, stirrup, stirrups, uh, uh, the uh, state line tack uh, can have them as well. I don't sell them. I don't get that much of a of an opportunity to be able to sell those things, but State Line Tech has them. Uh, I, I know they're on Amazon. I've seen them there as well. Um, we uh, let's see. We had a um, a video back here a little bit. I'm going to give you a link here um, in the comment section. I'm posting a link. Uh, Spurs talk. We've got a. a uh, call that we did a live stream that we did last year and we talked a lot about spurs I just put that in the in the comment section and uh, let's see here make sure we get um, we're almost done Steve uh, fitting an English saddle to a mule can't do it can't do it the mule is different won't work you know folks I'd, I'd love to tell you you can take an English saddle and get it on the mule uh, no, you can't. It's only one cinch. And, and folks, look at the pictures you're seeing of people that says, oh, I can ride my English saddle on a mule. Where's that saddle setting? Mm -hmm. Setting on top mm -hmm. of the scapula. Mm -hmm. Where is that front cinch? Up underneath the front leg. Yeah. And folks, it ain't worth it. Why? Why put your mule through that? I really, you know, I, I love these mules. And I just hate to see people say, well, I want an English saddle. I, I, folks, I wish they could tell you it works. That was my biggest problem with Bishop was, was dealing with this saddle thing that they were giving out these great trophies and things like this and, and other, and other uh, shows as well. And the animal was suffering through it for a $5 ribbon. Yeah, he's got the saddle sitting on top of the scapula, you know. But if you look at any mule that has an English saddle on them, is sitting on top of the scapula, and folks, the mule is paying the price while you're enjoying your English saddle. Now, I know that that's right to the point, but think about your mule, think about your donkey, 
Is it really worth it? Is it really worth him being through all that pain? And folks, I know that you're thinking, well, heck, I've been riding him for this past so-and-so and it's been fine. Well, when he starts crippling up, you're going to remember the day I told you it ain't going to work. You're going to pay a price. What people don't realize, we, we had this last year. You had an antelope scapula, which is a, yep. good, uh, a good comparison for the mule, the donkey scapula. And what people don't realize is it's about as thin as this piece of paper here. And exactly. what you'll see is the bone up at the very top. It's kind of rounded off a little bit. The bone up at the very top is about as thin as the paper. And so the saddle comes down on top of that when you have the saddle up on the scapula. And what you'll notice is it starts to roll over. The bone starts to roll over and that is excruciating pain. One thing you'll hear Steve say a lot is that the mule and the donkey do not show pain the way that we show pain. So you yep. might be thinking today, eh, never had a problem. There will come a day where he say, ah, that's it. I'm not going to take it no more. Uh, they show it differently than we do. So we ought to bring that antelope shoulder back just to yeah. let people see just how thin it is. It's a great illustration of what really is going on underneath the skin. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's wrap it up. Jack says, Steve, I got a new vet a few weeks ago, and she did her first visit to our farm. She gave our horse and mule complete checkups and booster shots, and my mule never batted an eye when the needle came out. Next came the teeth floating. No sedation, no twitch, just your rope halter and a confident vet. The mule actually seemed to enjoy the vibration of the tooth rasp. I hope to keep this vet as her confidence made the job easy. I love that. That's so good to hear. Um, uh, Isabel, on that question, she had the question about the, the English saddle. Isabel, thank you so much for asking that saddle. Great. Really Thanks. appreciate you asking that question. She says, okay, um, yep, we'll give you all the information we can, and then it's up to you to make the decisions you're going to make. Uh, Richard Matthews, good afternoon, Chaplain Steve. Good to have him here, right, Steve? Yeah, my buddy, Richard. Uh, let's see here, and then make sure over on YouTube. Um, last question for today. This one's from Sabra over on YouTube. Steve, well, this is a. She's asking if you could talk a little bit about this. I, I think this really needs a lot. Bit. Let's just give the short version. Steve, could you talk a little okay. bit about bits and hackamores again? I'm new to mules, and my mule is four year old and just learning. He hates putting in a bit. Steve, let's talk about the very basics of what they need to know about the bit. I will send a link to the bit article while you're doing that. You bet. All right, number one, get your teeth floated. Four years old, he still needs to have teeth floated so they're balanced and right. Folks, if the teeth aren't right, I don't care what bit you've got, you're not going to have a comfortable mule or donkey. So. Uh, when it comes down to it, I start with my mule riders, Martingale, and I build a foundation for six months. In the three month time frame, I'll start uh, going uh, four to six hours a week of training. Uh, I should be in three months. I should start going into my finished bit, which is my trail rider bit. Uh, and, and using a sur single. Folks, you cannot use a sur single enough. Just like ground communication, use a sur single, start with a halter, go from a halter to the mule rider's martingale, from the mule rider's martingale to the finish bit, and the trail rider, and that sur single will be there, and you don't have to touch things. They will understand, they will pack the bit, they will hold the bit, they will learn how to carry it. One of the downsides, Dave, is folks go and they put the bit in their mouth and say, okay, by golly, I can stop you now. No, folks, don't do that. Don't do that. Take and, and put them on a sur single. Let them walk around with it. Let them pick up the bit and carry it. Let them ask questions about it. Don't pull it up too tight. Never create one wrinkle or two wrinkles. Always allow the mule and the donkey to pick up the bit and to carry it. Very good. All right, folks, a couple things before we finish up here. Uh, Michael just said, what time do you all start your show? It's 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, which is 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. I just put a link in the comment section on both Facebook and YouTube where you can sign up 
to get notifications. So uh, just sign up there and we'll send you out two messages every Wednesday, a reminder and then a last minute notification with your links. So that's that. The second thing, we have a special going on the muleranch.com web store right now. If you have any order over $100 right now, we are sending you access to Steve's 2019 live clinic. It's in 1080p, full HD, and I recorded it and I got really, really close. So you can see really, really well. You're getting that for free. It's all online. So you buy your taps, immediate access to that video. You buy your saddle, immediate access to that video. Heck, you get the Mule Ground Foundation starting kit, immediate access to that video. Anything $100 or over, we're going to send you right now. It's 11 videos. I have a few more that I want to add. It'll probably wind up being 12, 13, 14 videos. It wow. is worth it 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 is very good so go video. to muleranch.com put in whatever order you've been thinking about doing uh, if you think that hey yeah i've got a few things to learn i'd love to hear what steve had to say uh last year about gaining trust and getting results thinking and talking like a mule and donkey last thing steve you have anything else that you want to say before we're done today you know dave we got a weekend coming up here memorial day weekend and folks go and they barbecue and enjoy life which we should but the reason they can barbecue and enjoy life and have time with their families and friends is because of men and women who put forth the effort and have have uh, died for our country. And uh, these men and women, are the greatest people in the world were during World War II, the greatest generation. They were incredible. Uh, we got men and women out there right now that are serving uh, in, in the armed forces and they deserve our prayers. They deserve uh, uh, time to set back and, and think about these people who put forth the effort. So Memorial Day weekend, folks, yes, have a good time. But remember the people who put forth the effort and you are able to, to absorb and do things because of the effort that they put in. Absolutely. All right, folks, thanks for your time this week. Thanks for joining us. The last link I put in the comment section yeah. is a link to sign up and get notifications for when we go live. You'll get two every single Wednesday, one notification early in the day with a reminder and one notification right before we Got go mine. live. So, you, yep, there you go. So you just tap the link. It opens up. You click the link on your computer. It opens up and you get to join us for 60, well today, 83 glorious minutes of mule and donkey talk. Steve, thanks for taking the time, wow. folks. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.